coming up on Campus Connection. We dive into the SoCal measles outbreak and tell you how you can protect yourself. We learn about the safety precautions CSULB is taking against a major emergency. And we go inside the Daily 49er newsroom for a scoop on this week's top stories. This and more coming up. Hello and welcome to Campus Connection. I'm Wiley Jahari. And I'm Rachel Hanna. Today, we'll start off with the headlines. Our reporter Susan is at the Daily 49er newsroom to give, give us the scoop on this week's top stories. Susan? Thanks, guys. I'm outside the Daily 49er newsroom. Let's go inside to get the scoop on this week's headlines. It is a busy day here at the Daily 49er newsroom as they're typing away the top stories of the week. The special issue this week is focusing on the community and diversity of Long Beach. Here's what the managing editor had to say. And so one of our reporters, he focused on the, the Cambodian community and he, he attended like the Cambodian New Year event and also um, highlighted the, um, uh, an event that took place about the mass genocide in the 70s. And another one was we, we highlighted um, a local publisher she, she works alone, publishes like out of her house. It was kind of like her dream to, to always do, do something like that. And so she works with like, uh, like local uh, writers and helps them get published. And she's a little bit different in the sense that like she helps the, she helps the writer like every step of the way um, and lets them kind of uh, write their dream in a sense rather than just taking their piece and, and editing it for them. Um, another thing we decided to do was uh, we, we translated all the articles this week in Spanish. And so our, our issue is, is both in English and Spanish. So you have the front half of the, the paper is in English, the back half is upside down in Spanish to kind of like differentiate the, uh, the, the languages. And then we also, uh, we tried something new uh, to, to complement like our community outreach. We actually started distributing to the local libraries. And so we're kind of, we're, we're not on campus anymore. We're, we're trying to build ourselves as a community paper. And those are the top stories for this week. From the Daily 49er Newsroom, I'm Susan Lorenzana. Back to you. CSULB is set to issue mass shooting survival kits to prepare for a possible emergency. The Stop the, Stop the Bleed kits will be put in 40 locations throughout campus on Thursday morning. The kits include tourniquets, gauze, and bandages, among other first aid materials. They are designed to save many lives as possible during a mass casualty event. To learn more about the kits, join representatives at the Student Recreation and Wellness Center. The measles outbreak has reached LA County reporter Daisy Sanchez follows the outbreak and shares some student concerns. Measles is one of the most contagious diseases in the world. The university first notified students and staff in April when an email went out alarming the campus that the disease had reached Long Beach. Student Jeremy Milling was concerned because he had recently visited Long Beach Airport where the first signs of the case had began. So that was quite concerning because I had dropped them off at the rental car area and so I was concerned about safety for my, myself, my family, my six-month-old niece and so it was very worrying. The LA County Department of Public Health says the main symptoms to look out for are fever, cough, runny nose, red watery eyes, and rashes. Health officials say if you feel like you've been exposed to the disease, to call your health care provider immediately and to stay indoors unless instructed otherwise. The Long Beach State Student Health Services Center also offers the MMR vaccine to students and staff who haven't been vaccinated and also offer blood tests to check whether or not you have the vaccine. Yeah, um, the health center actually sent me an email and I, I was worried because I was like, I don't know if I had the vaccine or not. So I came here actually and I asked them if I could do the testing to see if I had done it or not. You can also ask your doctor for a copy of your vaccination record to check if you're protected. In California, there are 42 confirmed cases of measles, seven of those being in the LA County. I think California in general has a higher amount of vaccinations than other places. So I mean, if it was taken care of, then I'm not too worried about it. Reporting for Campus Connection, I'm Daisy Sanchez. Coming up after the break, we'll take you to a planned white nationalist rally, but you might be surprised by who actually showed up. 
We talked to college students about where they stand on the 2020 presidential race. And the new CSULB ASI president tells us about her plans for the upcoming year and how they are affected by Hi, her past. I'm Peter. There's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in. Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. Planning the right amount of food is hard. The guesstimator makes it easy. Just tell it who's coming and what's for dinner. Then it tells you how much to make. And yes, it even plans for leftovers. Try it at savethefood.com. The new ASI president, Lisbeth Velasquez, shared what she looks forward to in her new leadership position and what sets her apart from former ASI presidents. The new ASI president shared what sets her apart than other former ASI presidents. I think a lot of it has to do with my intersectionality and the different ways that I see things. You know, I grew up in East LA, low income. Um, then I moved to Bell Gardens. I went to school in Downey High, so I was surrounded by middle class. And just the different experiences that I have in life, I think that's what set me apart from other candidates and other former ASI presidents, I just see things from a different lens than they do. And that's not to say that they haven't done amazing things. I just have a different way of seeing things. Velasquez emphasized that being humble is important in this new leadership position. And being humble also has to do a lot with knowing where my roots are from and not forgetting who I am, especially now in this position. You know, we sit in a position of privilege, being able to speak for students. And I speak for so many students now, and it's remembering it's about the students and not myself, not my own personal agenda. The ASI president wants students to know that student government is here to represent them. A lot of times students feel like they're not being listened to, that it's us against them, that it's student government against them, and it's not, you know, it's about us coming together and working together to really get these things accomplished. Velasquez explained that a great way for students to participate is applying for government positions this year. Students can apply before May 24th through BeachSync.com. For Campus Connection, I'm Lily Beth Rodriguez. It's been more than a week since Joe Biden announced that he is running for president. Let's take a look at what students have to say about their current president and the change they wish to see. Donald shoot. Trump being a president right Last now week, a US Army veteran is, was arrest. Um, doing good for the country. People don't look at his leadership. People look at his racism and how he treats other people, which is terrible. He's a, he's a terrible person, but with uh, jobs being really easy to find nowadays and unemployment being almost 0%, uh, he's doing a great job uh, controlling, in that, controlling in that aspect. He knows what he's doing in terms of the economy and money. Like, he's a good businessman, you know, he knows how to deal with money, but I don't think how he, kn he knows how to make it equal for everyone, how to treat people fairly, and, like how a president should treat people. President before Donald Trump was uh, President Obama, and his best friend Joe Biden actually announced that he is, in fact, running. And I was hoping that he would probably go to Obama first for advice, just because I liked him so much as a president, I think that would be the best choice just because it would be like a second Obama. I think uh, immigration is a huge problem that should be worked on. It's, although there are sanctuary cities to take care of the people that come in illegally, there, sh there should be a better way and a legal way for immigration to happen. We need to work on the gun violence that's actually happening within the country itself. Uh, with almost 75% of the school shooting, 75% uh, of the mass shootings being in the schools of children, uh, you know, people are just going to learn and people are actually being scared to learn just because of that. Last week, a U.S. Army veteran was arrested after planning a terrorist attack at a white nationalist rally in Long Beach. 26-year-old Mark Domingo planned to set off IED bombs with Undercover FBI agents caught him before anything could happen. Due to the safety of the public, the announcement of his arrest took place after the rally occurred. If convicted, Domingo will spend a maximum 15 years in prison. 
Our own reporter, Katie Brown Greaves, went to the Nationalist rally to see who actually showed up. Chants echoed throughout Bluff Park last Sunday while protesting against white nationalists. I'm here because I don't support white supremacy and I think that it's super important for me to use my privilege to stand in front of the people that white supremacy is attacking. Police patrolled the rally and were on high alert for any violence. Over 200 counter protesters showed up. Some people you wouldn't expect to be there. I'm glad to see students involved because it seemed like a lot of the other march that went down the street was a lot of young people and, and it's, that's who needs to do it because the older generations are letting you down, I think. As you can see, Bluff Park is filled with counter protesters today, but there didn't seem to be many from the opposing side. Those here say that's for the best. I don't think there's free speech. I think there's hate speech now, and words are violence, as we've seen. So I'm here supporting that, and if any Nazis show up, to punch them. The protest rally all started because of a Facebook group tied to white nationalists posting about having a rally in Long Beach. Many people decided to stand up against them with their creative signs and powerful chants in a united front. Uh, sometimes the news can feel really isolating, so it's really uh, empowering to come out and feel that you're not alone. You're not the only person out there who thinks everything's going crazy. Katie Brown Greaves, Campus Connection. Coming up on Campus Connection. A business in downtown Long Beach helps bring attention to other local businesses and support women business owners. CSULB is finally voting on their new mascot. We'll tell you all about the finalists. And I'll catch you up on Long Beach State Athletics, including a new national champion. This and more coming up. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. No doubt you're going places, young lady. Thank you. And thank you for the interview as well. I can imagine it was the last thing that you wanted to do after such a long campaign meeting. You really are a very intelligent young woman. You're very smooth. You're very smooth yourself. <laughs> you have no idea. Hello and welcome back to Campus Connection. I'm Wiley Jahari. And I'm Rachel Hanna. Long Beach has always had a strong sense of support for their own community. And today we have Sharmina Hossein look into how one of the local businesses is doing just that. This is Made by Millworks, located in downtown Long Beach. They welcome you with a sign addressing that everyone is safe here. The store itself looks like a gallery as they feature and sell work made by local artists. They carry many varieties of products as well, such as tiny pottery, stickers and pins, and a whole lot of Long Beach pride decor. It is a mixed use space. We're a gift shop, an art gallery, the actual made businesses, and everything we sell is made or designed within 25 miles. And it's all about supporting local economy, local creatives, local artists. Not only has Made by Millworth supported local Long Beach businesses such as the Pie Bar and the Black Green Coffee, but they've also made a safe place for everyone else right in their backyard. The Eleanor is an uncommon drinkery for common people they still continue to support other businesses. Which is, again, focused on all things hyper-local. Most of the beer and wine we sell is hyper-local. It's made within 25 miles. And if it's not, it's made by women, is the whole idea behind it. So we have some French wines with women owners or women vintners. We have beers that are made by women. They're brewed by women. If it's not local, it's made by women. And if it's both, it's even better. 
the Eleanor aims to give a very laid back vibe which allows the locals to come and relax even with their dogs. The architecture here, kind of industrial and art together, the combination is amazing. The lightning is also awesome. So. Well done, well played. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. Come and check it out for yourself at their next opening of an art show called Blah Blah Cloud Machine, which will be held on May 11th from 7 to 10 p.m. And that's all for today. I'm Sharmina Hossein. Back to you in the station. We are finally in the last round of voting for the new Long Beach State mascot. It has come down to either a shark, stingray, or no mascot at all. The no mascot option will keep the Go Beach phrase as the official university identification. Popular choices like the giraffe and the pelican did not make the final cut. An email was sent out to students with a link encouraging them to vote May 6 to May 8. And Long Beach State Athletics, though they might not have a mascot, had a busy week. We'll send it to Andrew to tell you about the exciting games and the historical one. Andrew? Thanks, Rachel. It definitely was a busy week for Long Beach State Athletics. We'll start off with the dirt bags. The baseball team made a little season history of their own this weekend, sweeping UC Riverside at, at home. This was the 11 and 34 team's first series sweep of the year and their first three game win streak. The Dirtbags defense is what really sealed the deal with this series, leaving tw 12 Riverside base runners stranded in the second game. The team now looks to take on number one UCLA tonight in Los Angeles. Now moving on to women's softball, the team won their series against UC Davis in a nail biter this weekend. The Beach took the series 2-1, winning with scores of 10-0 and 3-2. And and the Beach's disciplined offense is what really got them on the, on the board. They started off the fourth game by loading up the bases using bunts, then working the pitch count to score. This strategy is not usually seen by the Beach, but it, provided a, it proved effective against Davis. And now we're going, we're going to move on to the story you've all been waiting for. Long Beach State men's volleyball team has done it again, winning back-to-back -back national championships this weekend. The match was definitely an exciting one, but the beach secured the trophy with a 3-1 win. I'll send it over to our reporter Adam, who caught up with beach fans during championship week to see how they felt about the team. The Long Beach State men's volleyball team are your 2019 national champions. Back-to-back -back titles will establish the 49ers as one of the top volleyball programs in the country. But as incredible as that accomplishment is, not everyone has kept up this season. Nothing actually. I have no idea anything about them. I know that we have one. I kind of feel guilty I haven't gone to a game. <laughs> like I feel like if you have the number one team in the nation at your school, it'd be cool to go to. Well, I know we're just the national champions because I saw the big banner and that's all I know about them. The 49ers are the first in school history to win back-to-back -back national titles but their success seems to still go unnoticed by too many here at the Long Beach State campus. So why is it that such a historic run isn't getting the attention it deserves? Yeah, I think like volleyball definitely isn't as much of like a, a media sport. Like well, America prides themselves on having football being like their thing. So whenever you hear about other sports, or how, especially men, I guess in volleyball, you don't have to see that except that in an Olympic level whenever it becomes popularized in the general media. That's really, really cool, good for them. But I feel like it should be more like the advertising and school. I really don't see like the hype around the team. Not every school can claim a national championship in any sport. So for Long Beach to claim back-to-back -back national titles, I think it's time for students to realize that history is being made right on campus. I'm Adam Kalea, reporting for Campus Connection. And it looks like that's all we have for sports today. Wiley, Rachel, back to you. Coming up after the break, we sit down with journalist and professor Elizabeth Sanchez to talk about ethics in the industry. And I'll give you the inside scoop on entertainment at the beach. This and more coming up. <laughs> Maria, so how's work? It was fourth period biology. Our students just weren't getting how easily viruses spread. So Ms. Bell and I had them role play a zombie virus outbreak. By the time they had all learned the lesson, all the living were dead. 
Hey, how's your job going? That big sales meeting I planned? Next year, I might get to go. <clears throat> cool. 150 over 90. 180 over 111. 160 over 110. I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it. Or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. The Euclea Center for Ethical Leadership awarded 15 $3,000 stipends to professors who integrated a three-hour ethics module into their course. Aubrey Corey has more on what the award means in this week's interview. Thanks, guys. According to the National Business Ethics Survey, 41% of workers reported seeing ethical misconduct at the workplace in 2016. The Euclea Center for Ethical Leadership wants to make sure graduates are prepared when they leave school. That's why they give professors a stipend to incorporate it into their courses. This year, 15 professors received the Ethics Across the Curriculum Award. Since its beginning in 2005, they've given out more than 100 awards to professors in the five colleges on campus. Professor Elizabeth Sanchez is one of the recipients from the Liberal Arts College, and she teaches journalism here at Cal State Long Beach. She is also a working professional as a television journalist. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So why are ethics so important in journalism? Oh, ethics have always been important in the field of journalism, but things have changed as far as technology and how we deliver news. And news is so immediate these days, delivered on different platforms. So people need to still have the code of ethics at the forefront of their mind. Take, for instance, in 2016 when the terrorists attacked the resource center in San Bernardino County. Uh, the FBI arrested the suspects, they went to the suspects' home, of course the media went to the suspects' homes, they were reporting live, streaming live, they started showing people's social security cards, their driver's license, even people who did not, who were not suspected of the crime. So they violated privacy laws, they went across um, a criminal uh, tape um, that the FBI had, so they weren't thinking of those ethics when they were on live, and we have to, we have to on different platforms, you always have to think about a code of ethics when you're a journalist. Yeah, that's very important. Um, can you tell us a little more about how you got to where you are today? Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm an alumni of uh, Cal State Long Beach, and um, I started in Yuma, Arizona as a reporter and anchor and then went uh, to Charlotte, to uh, Phoenix and then to CBS Network and just traveled all over the place and went back to local news and it's been an exciting career. I've covered everything from the Space Shuttle Columbia crash to Michael Jackson's um, trial to his death and uh, just have covered a lot of things and it's been exciting and I still love it. That's why I'm still in the business working at the CBS station in San Diego. Yeah, you've been everywhere. Um, so I know you wrote a book, Water Cooler, um, and it's all about behind the scenes. So tell us what really happens behind the scenes. Well, the reason why I wrote that book is because we were always gathering around the coffee pot or the water cooler and people would come up, even people in, in the building would say, hey, so is that woman really guilty of that crime? Do you think she really did that? And, you know, then you talk about, gosh, how goofy was that person you interviewed? Are they really just that bizarre in person? And so, the, and even at the grocery store, you know, people would recognize you. Oh, I saw you covered that story. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. And they would ask you questions. And so I gathered some of my colleagues and we put together um, this book about just some behind the scenes things. Uh, one of the reporters from CBS News, Barry Peterson, he wrote about being in Sarajevo and being in a car that had bullet um, holes in the door and imagine getting in that car um, and driving away in that car and, and feeling uh, you know how safe are you yeah insane well that's all the time we have for today professor Elizabeth Sanchez thank you so much for being here we appreciate it thanks for having me Rachel and Wiley back to you as the final weeks of school are coming to a finish students at CSULB are offered a mixture of events from relaxation to celebrating music Ty has more Thanks guys. Students were offered a mixture of events this past week. Relaxation to the body and beautiful sounds to their ears. As finals are approaching, students are given the chance to relax and take their minds off studying in Beach Balance's weekly events. Beach Balance is offering students a chance to unwind and rejuvenate with one of their licensed masseuse, located in the Student Recreation and Wellness Center. Students were able to enjoy a five to seven minute chair massage completely free of service. 
During Chair Massage Thursday, students were also offered a lecture called Stress Less about the important aspects of wellness and understanding importance of nutrition. These events will be held to the end of the semester, so be sure to stop by. On Saturday, May 4th, families, students, and friends all came together to enjoy classical music in the Carpenter Performing Arts Center. Bob Cole's Conservatory Symphony, one of the finest ensembles in Southern California, put on this show. Celebrating music of 2019 in Gustav Mahler Symphony No. 2 of Resurrection. Performances by the choir, soloists, and the orchestra, performing his most popular and successful works during his lifetime. Alongside the event, the show was in honor of the beloved music director that had passed away from CSULB, Carolyn Bremer. Bremer was a dedicated individual in the music department. The Bob Cole Conservatory of Music will always remember her and will have her legacy live on forever. And students got the chance to, to discuss diversity in media with comedian Ken Jong. Our reporter Corey was at the event and has all the details. Tonight, Long Beach State is spending an intimate evening with comedian Ken Jeong. The line starts here in order to gain access into the Carpenters Performing Arts Center. Everyone is completely excited, put on their best outfits, and ready for the evening. Oh my god, I think I would be a, a fool not to come. This is my senior year and I have never been to one of these events. And so being fortunate enough to be part of this and to be able to come, um, it's just amazing. I'm here to go. <laughs> Jiang! Yeah! Jiang started his comedy career after his wife was diagnosed with cancer. His most famous roles include Ride Along with Kevin Hart and the Hangover series. ASI was able to stop and talk about tonight's event. So every semester or so, it's, we have a series called An Evening With. And with that, we try to bring a prominent speaker in the entertainment business or a speaker um, who's doing an activist work just someone to come in and encourage our campus and speak to our student body. So this year we um, were able to score Ken Young, and it's just been amazing to work with him. He's such a great person, like always on top of his things. And he even sent us a little video, I don't know, it was posted on CSULB ASI where he's like, hey Long Beach, I'm so excited to see you. So he's super easy and outgoing, which is why we're so excited for today. Yeah, and a fun fact, um, we actually did sell out on the first day the tickets went out, so that was awesome. Um, obviously everyone wants and would love to see Ken Jong, so we're excited for that. This is Corey Asafa with Campus Connection. Back to you guys. And that's all we have for entertainment news this week. Back to you. That's all we have for this week on Campus Connection. I'm Rachel Hanna. And I'm Wiley Jahari. We'll see you next time.